Let's just pray in for a second. I know that God is all there is. And I know that we've been called here today to this spiritual practice called Unity San Jose as a gift to ourselves, from our higher self to our self that forgets. And I'm so grateful for this gathering in the storm. And so it is. And so, Margo, I am going to spotlight you for our opening song. I love this. This is a Karen Drucker song. You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God You are the face of God I hold you in my heart you are a part of me you are the face of god you are the face of god i hold you in my heart you are a part of me you are the face of god you are the face of God, you are the face, I hold you in my heart, you are a part of me, you are the face of God, you are the face of God, you, I hold you in my heart, you are part of me you are the face of God you are the face of God I hold you in my heart you are a part of me you are the face of God you are the face of God, of God, I hold you in, I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You. You are a part of me. You are the face. You are the face of God. Thank you, Margot Leduc. So glad to have you here. And so I thought it was uh, appropriate appropriate to have a picture of a candle. Um, these candles are sitting on water, so uh, that makes it doubly appropriate for today. And just drinking that image in or closing your eyes if you're comfortable. Just becoming calm here in this room. Just seeing the face of God, even though we may know God by many names, each one of us knows God differently. And it's just all one. It's all the one. Through many religions, through many scriptures, through many, through everything, through many people. 
So I want us to settle into this sanctuary. Thinking about something David Alt said last week that everything is always provided. And so that's the case here in the storm. Everything is always provided. For what we need, for what our calling is, for what we're called here to do. And it right before service, it it, it reminded me of um, a passage uh, in the Gospels, uh, Matthew chapter eight, where the disciples are with Jesus out on a boat, and a storm is just rocking everything, and Jesus is asleep, and the disciples are freaking out, saying, "Wake up, Jesus! Why are you sleeping?" and He's just as calm as can be, as calm as can be. And he calms the storm by saying, peace be still. And so whatever it is that you need to do to calm the storms of your life, peace be still. Just know that when the God or the goddess in you seems to be asleep. It's not asleep at all. It's there all along. And so that power to calm the storm is absolutely within you as a divine creature. So let's just focus on what that is. Some folks might call this a watery initiation. Um, if you're into Jungian theory, but just think about the water and its healing power to cleanse and to clear and to calm and how water can manifest itself in many states. But we're just paying attention to the calmness of our being right here that is beneath these candles, beneath the light knowing that both can exist at once. Both the, the watery and the fire can coexist in a peaceful way, just like a candle sitting atop of this lake. So just feel that calmness in your power center, which is right above the navel and just breathe from that place. Letting any tension go from that place. And letting any tension go from the heart space as you breathe from there. Letting any tension go from your shoulders and your neck. And let's let the water be symbolic of the resolution of all things to come. Meaning that answers will come to all questions. And let the light be reflective of the healing power of the one known by many names that is a part of you. We invite that light to shine now wherever it's needed. Taking a deep breath, 
slowly bringing ourselves and our awareness just fully present into whatever gifts are to be received through the message and the music and the prayers and the readings and the community presence, the community's intention today. We share in this sanctuary with great gratitude. And so it is. And Betsy, I'm going to spotlight you for today's readings. Today's reading is from Michael Beckwith. In this three-dimensional movie called Life, <clears throat> there are no stand-ins, body doubles, or understudies. No one can fill in for us. <clears throat> Realization of this truth alone emanate, eliminates the need to imitate, conform, limit, or betray our loyalty to the originality of self Imagine the relief of removing your carefully crafted masks fashioned by societal forms of conditioning and instead responding to what comes into your experience directly from your authentic self. One of the first principles to honor in your relationship with yourself is to respect and trust your own inner voice. This form of trust is the way of the heart the epitome of well-being, and so it is. Please join me in our opening affirmation. There is only one power and one presence active in the universe and in my life, God in everything and everyone. The one infinite source of love, abundance, harmony, wholeness, intelligence, and joy is expressing as me. So it is. Thank you so much, Betsy. And before I begin my talk, I, I wanted to share this picture because it's going to be a part of uh, the talk. And that's me on the far left. I think I'm in the first grade and that is or maybe i don't know <laughs> i i don't know somewhere somewhere around there and on the far right is uh he was my best friend michael billman and then next to him is my friend another michael and then right next to me is brian and then in the middle is ricky i don't know who the taller guy is he's just too tall and I, and I so appreciate, um, maybe I'm too short in that picture. I'm just kind of crouching down with my um, hands clasped. I always like to think this is like uh, something in me knew the future me would be uh, spiritual. And I'm wearing red, which uh, became my favorite color. That has a different different story altogether to it. And I'm going to stop sharing. And so I, I love that picture. Uh, and let me go back to Michael Billman. So I think I need to edit out last names <laughs> in the, in the YouTube video. When I was in the first or second grade or all through grade school, my mom would drop me off every day at school and I would see my best friend, Michael, and I could see him kind of recognizing my mom's car from a hundred feet away. And I remember every day getting out of the car and walking up um, the, the front steps of the school. And I remember when I would see Michael, my, my eyes would tear up a little bit. They would tear up always. And I would sort of look the other way to wait till that cleared. But I, I never told him about that because I wasn't, I didn't know what was going on. I, I didn't know, I didn't understand the emotions that I was feeling. But last year I had the chance to see him after many years and, and a few other people in that picture. And I realized the significance of him in my life was that he accepted me 
exactly as I was. He accepted me fully. And in doing so, he saw the real David. You know, in, in movies where you see the scene where someone says, you see me or I see you, that it's that kind of being seen in a way that I maybe didn't know or register from my family. Uh, and so why why was that remarkable to me? It, it's because I, I, I never felt that before, before, and I'm not sure if I've felt that in the same way since then, in that kind of, um, that way that just made my tears well up every time I would see the person. And I guess uh, it makes sense that your parents, it's their job to control your behavior so you don't eat the wrong things. And so you don't walk off the curb into the traffic. It's, you know, you're, you're whoever raised you, it's their job to regulate you for better or for worse. And not all of us get a later programming adjustment that's spiritual that says you are loved and accepted just the way you are. You know, my parents were a little bit older and they, 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 they just, they, they didn't know how to relate in that way. So, and, and sure, you may hear that in life. Someone finally tells you that you're perfect and complete just the way you are, but it doesn't get downloaded fully. They say, I heard a saying recently that said, just because you say something once doesn't mean it's learned and known. You probably have to say it or hear it a thousand times before it gets downloaded correctly. And so instead of absorbing this knowledge of self-acceptance, you, you, you get this, um, this, unhealthy judgment that turns into self-judgment and that's part of being human and the tape recordings are deep society adds to those tape recordings because society is made up of people who heard those tape recordings that's we're all we're all listening to the same tapes that we need to seek somehow outside we need to keep on seeking outside of ourselves so we're malconditioned to seek approval from the outside. But the external voices of acceptance are transitory and they're inconsistent. And we equate our self-worth, our self-acceptance with what others say is acceptable to, to a large degree. There's a quote by Mark Nepo that says, I have tried so hard to please that I never quite realized that no one was really watching. <laughs> So you just you're just in this habit, and it's like, does anybody really care? I'm trying. You're trying so hard to be what society wants you to be, and is anybody really watching? Uh, you're watching that. So acceptance from others is typically conditional, and that means it's typically a losing game, because it's always looking to the outside. And those of you who are understanding of the enneagram. If you're a three, you understand that world. Or if you have a three wing, it's a personality type. Our country is supposed to be that personality type that looks to the outside for uh, reflection and justification that we're okay. But that's an ego game. That's an egoic game. And Marianne Williamson, another voice in the news lately, uh, says that the ego speaks first and the ego speaks loudest. So we have to somehow overcome that initial instinct in us to default to listening to the outside, to default to the, the ego's hunger. And I say that the ego, no matter how much we feed it, will always be hungry. It will never be full. It will never, ever be full. So what's truly fulfilling and lasting and what's really paramount of the most importance is what Esther Hicks would call the relationship between you and you. Your opinion about yourself. And after all, every relationship that you have with another person or with work or with anything is reflecting back to you the quality of the relationship between you and you. So I think we need to look at our intrapersonal communication instead of interpersonal communication. That means we need to pay attention to how we're talking with ourselves because it's quite unconscious and it's, it, it's quite um, persistent. So 
we must turn to radical self acceptance and i'll explain to you uh, later why why it's it's radical and away from external acceptance if we're to make progress last wednesday night uh during our our, our brief wednesday night gathering mark mesadorian said we've got to look inside of ourselves for wholeness and it's the inversion of what we're used to we're used to looking outside of ourselves for wholeness to to our doctors to to our friends to society to to facebook to to our boss at work so this inner look this this self acceptance is not the default that we're used to it's typically not taught it's typically not mastered and so we have to figure out how to learn it and so that's why i like places like this cuz this is where conver how often do you hear conversations about this learning to build self acceptance and i want to read to you the, the first thing that came up on google when i googled self acceptance was from the virginia department of health and it says that acceptance is defined as an individual's acceptance of all their attributes positive or negative. And that's why I think that it's radical. Because isn't that a twist on what we're conditioned to do? We're conditioned to have self acceptance for all the things that we've done good. David got a good grade. David did this well. David, you know, and, and we're not taught to uh, value the negative we're, we're taught to reject the negative or try to change the negative if it's a physical quality about ourselves we're trying to change that we tend to hide and neglect the parts of ourselves that might be unacceptable to other people but that's that's a losing game there's certain things that we just can't change we'll always have faults but how powerful would it be to accept ourselves in this moment exactly as we are physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, uh, in terms of what we've achieved and not achieved, exactly as we are and exactly as we are not. So the Virginia Department of, of Health goes on to say that self-acceptance is unconditional. That's another thing that makes it radical. Self-acceptance is unconditional. And so you hear about conditional love, but you realize that love and respect from society and others is often, what have you done for me lately? You could be working for a company and if like you don't have a good quarter, they could lay you off. It's about what have you done for me lately? And so to, so to love ourselves unconditionally, to love ourselves unconditionally, that radical self-acceptance is something that no one can touch. No one can touch that. That's another power of this. So to be self-accepting is to be satisfied with who you are despite the flaws and regardless of past choices. And that means forgiveness. I was talking about Jesus during the meditation and Jesus said to forgive 70 times seven. Do you think he meant just forgive others? I think he meant we must forgive ourselves and forgive others. 70 times seven being symbolic for on every dimension. So forgiveness is, a, is an important tool. The Virginia Department of Health goes on to say that we can nurture ourselves through some of the following tasks. And I'll share a few of these. One of them is celebrating your strengths. Do we know our strengths? Another is understanding that you and everyone makes mistakes. The people that are judging you the people that are judging you make mistakes just as much as you do. And perhaps they're going through this mental game too, right? Seeking acceptance from the outside. The other tool from Virginia Department of Health is recognize the silver lining in negative situations. Forgive yourself. We just talked about that. And develop self-compassion, particularly in difficult times. I think Karen Drucker would say, she's going to be here next week, be gentle with yourself. That's self-compassion. And then finally, the Virginia Depart uh, Department of uh, Health says, don't compare yourself to others. You've heard that too before. This, this all reminds me of a story when I was at eBay, when I got a really, 
I had a really good review when I was there my first quarter. I had a really good review again. And then I had a bad review from the same boss. And I was devastated. I was devastated. And he could see how devastated I was. So he he talked to me and he said, you know, you could let yourself just wallow in a corner. Or you could use this information to make yourself better. Because he wanted me to get better. So in a way, I could receive that information as a loving gesture to get better and to take my ego out of it and to look at myself and say, you know, I'm going to use this information to climb to the next level, because if I don't, I'm not going to I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm not going to improve. So one more thing from the Virginia Department of Health is they say is surround yourself with people who accept you and believe in you. This is going to the outside a little bit, but it's creating a, an environment of caring and support, a therapeutic environment, if you will, hanging around with people who model self-acceptance in their lives and who accept you for who you are, who are some of those people. My friend Anita used to say, if you're in a toxic situation, whether it's a toxic relationship, whether it's a toxic work situation, get out of it because it's toxic to your soul. Get out of it. That's your decision. Get out of it. That That's one way you could approach it or you could heal it. But if you don't, if it doesn't work, if it's killing you, if it's toxic, then get out of it. So next I will say on this journey of unconditional self-acceptance, it's much more possible to be successful on this journey of self-acceptance by remembering our connectedness to true source. This is our anchor in the storm. This is our net. This is our, it's our identity as divine. It is our identity and we forget our identity and we can lose our way in the storm. And, and self-acceptance is perfectly aligned with unity principles because Principle one, if God is all there is, and principle two, if we are divine cre creatures, one, one with God, if we are divine creatures, then how can we not accept the gift that we are? How can we not? There's a unity author named Eric Butterworth, and his essential message is that the most profound transformation that one can have is by realizing their own divinity. And he says, and I quote him, we must all make the great decision to claim the divinity within us. Sometimes reminding ourselves of that fact 10 times a day, if that's what it takes. And when we make that great decision, that takes our parents, biological or otherwise, that takes them off the hook. It takes, look what happened to me off the hook. And any other source of malconditioning that we had, it takes that off the hook and it deep. It de-energizes, disenergizes, it disintegrates, it dissolves the energy of the past. And now you're looking at the present. You're divine. You're your own parent. You're going to accept yourself fully. So all of this practice of self-acceptance, I think, needs to begin with thinking. There's someone in, in Unity who said, uh, I was reading yesterday, that what's the most important spiritual practice? in all of unity. And the first thing I thought of was, oh, well, prayer. And they said, no, no. The most important spiritual practice in all of unity and all of new thought, that's a hint, is thinking. So whether you go to Center for Spiritual Living or Unity or Divine Science, or you listen to many of the modern mystics like Esther Hicks, the first and most important tool is thinking because prayer is focused thinking. Meditation is disciplined thinking and non-thinking, but it's all based around thinking. And that's what's happening the most. Remember uh, uh, Eliza Bloom Robinson? She would say, when you're thinking something and you just said something judgmental to yourself and non-self-accepting, just, just stop. Say to yourself, stop and rethink that thought. Stop and rethink that thought and feel it emotionally. 
along this line, Michael Beckwith says, do you live in a minefield or a garden? When we live in a minefield mentally, we are overrun with weeds of worry, doubt, fear, lack, and limitation. So choose to cultivate your inner garden. And, and how do we do that? We do that by cultivating a daily practice. We do that by, once again, catching our thoughts daily. And I'll go back to the, the reading that Betsy read earlier. Michael Beckwith says that in this three-dimensional movie called Life, there are no stand-ins. No one can fill in for us. So the realization of this truth alone eliminates the need to imitate or conform and betray our loyalty to the original self. So we, he's saying there, we must accept ourselves. And he goes on to say, imagine the relief of removing your carefully crafted mask that you fashioned to be socially acceptable in the world, to be successful in the world. Imagine removing that mask, right? The power of doing that. And instead of, of doing that, responding to what comes into your experience directly from your authentic self. And he says that one of the first principles to honor in your relationship with yourself is to respect and trust your inner voice. Because right here, you're muting your inner voice. This is what we've been putting on our, all of our lives. And we're you know, afraid to just say, all right, let's just be real. Let's just take off the mask and be authentic and risk vulnerability. So that's connecting with our self-acceptance, our self-accepted self and our authentic self. So um, in closing, we're going we're gonna to go through a few things here. And one way to cultivate a daily practice is by quieting your inner critic, as I've mentioned, by quieting your mind. And one of the practices to do that is you can develop a mantra. Another practice is repeating affirmations. And so I'm going to read you a bunch of affirmations. Most of them I found on the I Am app. I went through last night and I could not, I could not write them down fast enough. They were all so good on the I Am app. And then I added a few of my own. But if you hear one of these affirmations that really speaks to you, you can make it a mantra. And this will be on the recording. But what I want you to do right now is just center yourselves into this state of willingness and receptivity, calling in the authentic self, forgetting about the societal masks that you wear, being willing to accept yourself radically, radical self-acceptance, which is radical self-love. And say after me, each one of these affirmations. So first, say after me, I trust my inner voice. I trust my inner voice. I welcome this new version of me that I'm developing. I welcome this new version of me that I'm developing. No one should ever tell me how to feel about myself. No one should ever tell me how to feel about myself. Only I get to decide who I am and what kind of life I want. Only I get to decide who I am and what kind of life I want. I am allowed to be nervous, yet still act with courage. I am allowed to be nervous and yet still act with courage. I am allowed to be human and make mistakes, everyone does. I am allowed to be human and make mistakes, everyone does. There's no reason to be overly critical of myself. There's no reason to be overcritically of myself. I choose to advocate for myself. I choose to advocate for myself. I refuse to water myself down for anyone. I refuse to water myself down for anyone. The only validation I need is from myself. 
The only validation I need is from myself. Yeah, we're gonna take a take a breath. We're gonna do the the final round of affirmations here. I believe in myself more than I fear judgment from anyone. I believe in myself more than I fear judgment from anyone. I am exactly who I need to be in this moment. I am exactly who I need to be in this moment. I forgive myself for the times I didn't believe in me. I forgive myself for the times I didn't believe in me. It's worth, let me start again. It's not worth ruminating again about the past because time is precious. Say with me, it's not worth ruminating again about the past because time is precious. I make a difference showing up every day and doing the best I can. So I make a difference showing up every day and doing the best I can. We're almost there. Fully present now. I have a beautiful soul that shines and spreads love to others. I have a beautiful soul that shines and spreads love to others. Only I can achieve the mission I was called here for. Only I can achieve the mission I was called here for. This work is important for global consciousness. This work is important for global consciousness. Okay, can we do five more? Here we go. Take a deep breath. Relax your shoulders. There are people who admire me. There are people who admire me. I need to see myself as they see me. I need to see myself as they see me. I believe in the power of my voice. I believe in the power of my voice. I am a powerful, confident, and unstoppable force. I am a powerful, confident, and unstoppable force. I appreciate myself unconditionally. I appreciate myself unconditionally. Let's say that one again. I appreciate myself unconditionally. I appreciate myself unconditionally. And finally, things are always working out for me. Things are always working out for me. And so I wanted to say before Marco sings here, the last quote from Michael Beckwith is, the universe corresponds to the nature of your song. The universe corresponds to the nature of your song. So all those thoughts create this feeling tone, create this energy, create this vibration. No matter what you believe in, it's universal law. And the universe is going to respond. So let's think of that as, as Margo sings this beautiful song. And let's make self-acceptance a part of our song. And so it is. Come as you are, bring every burden. Come as you are, bring all your shame. Come as you are, I know you're hurting. But when you call upon his name and surrender, surrender. You'll never be the same oh, oh, oh. Come as you are All who are broken Come as you are And find God's grace Come as you are his arms are open, let go and let God just have his way to surrender, surrender, and you'll never be the same.
Come as you are, your past is over. Come as you are, break every chain. Come as you are, he holds the future. All things are new. This is your day to surrender. Surrender. And you'll never be the same. No, 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 no. Never be the same. No. Just come as you are. Yeah, yeah. Surrender, yes, surrender. It doesn't matter where you've been or the color of your skin. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter where you've been or the color of your skin. Come as you are, come as you are. Thank you, Margo LaDuke. I love that song. And Linda just chatted me a couple of things. I, I wrote one there. Don't judge your insides by someone else's outside. I love that one. And then by Rick Warren, if you live for the approval of others, you will die by their rejection. Well, that is some serious uh, stuff. Thank you for sharing, Linda. And at this time, I would like us to just think about those who are less fortunate than us. We were able to hold this Zoom meeting together with the electricity on, even though I had the power outage twice right before the start of this thing, um, how blessed we are. And so wherever we go, I, I think um, on the 17th of the month, we have, um, I think it's acts of random acts of kindness day some somebody can make maybe uh check me on that but that's a wonderful way for us to kind of pay it forward the blessings that we have when someone else is in need so let's with that spirit i think about all those in gaza who are suffering right now who don't have enough food to eat who don't have enough water who don't have medical care regardless of the causes and the reasons i just know that Right now, God is where they are. Right now, our prayers are where they are. And so any person that's suffering right now, let's bring them into our mind's view. Lynn's dog, Lizzie. Don's friend, Mac. Just anyone in our orbit that is in need of healing, healing and wholeness. So I'm grateful for this awareness. I'm grateful for this healing that's in progress right now. And I'm gonna share my screen. And, oh, let us just say a blessing for all of the love offerings that continue to sustain us as we embark uh, on the beginning of our 75th anniversary, which will be in July. Think about it. How many helping hands have kept, have, have kept Unity San Jose alive? This church has split twice, come back together or had a different reincarnation. So many ministers, so many great souls, and so we are continuing that important work for, for ourselves and for the world. So say with me, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that we are, all that we have, all that we give, and all that we receive. Our generous love offerings do good work in our community and beyond, and they are returned to us multiplied abundantly. And Linda, I'm going to spotlight you for the announcements. Hello, everyone. I keep getting distracted by all the wind that's blowing outside my window. 
Um, Margo, welcome back. It's so wonderful to hear your beautiful music and your singing. We're excited for the next time that you're back. We have some great guest speakers and musicians lined up. Um, you can see the list there. Um, and note that next week our service with Karen Drucker will be at a special time at 2 p.m. So you can still watch the Super Bowl. Mark Mesidorian's event, the Angel Healing Experience, is this Friday, February 9th. To register, go to the website event page. Thank you. And join Reverend David at our midweek gathering this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. on Zoom. And now, back to you, David. Thanks, Linda. Two more short announcements. One is, my okay, there we go. Uh, the Unity Annual Meeting, which by the virtue of its name happens once a year, is gonna be on February 25th. So it's in a few weeks. Uh, it's immediately following service. All are welcome, but in order to vote, uh, you need to be a member. And I'll talk about that in a moment. So please join us. And uh, Marianne Babiars, our treasurer, is going to be giving a finance update, and I will be giving a ministry update. Uh, our board president, Betsy Ross, is going to be presiding, and we are also going to uh, reelect a few uh, board members for uh, their second terms. So that should be, uh, we're trying to make these meetings shorter each year. And Unity San Jose membership. One thing to know, if you think you're a member already, but you haven't filled out the form in the last two weeks, you're you're technically not a member. Now, it's okay if you choose not to be a member. Um, like I said, this is this is just a reaffirmation of your um, your relationship and commitment to Unity San Jose, but it does not have an attendance requirement. It does not have a pledging requirement. And it does not mean that you can't be a member somewhere else and be a member here too. So it's not exclusive. So just check out uh, the website. It's a really short process. Um, we've had about 22 people go through that process already. And um, you can see the, the frequently asked questions and you can make a decision whether you want to become a member or not. But we invite you. We invite you warmly and we appreciate um, members because any significant decision that we will make as a membership, like electing board members, making any huge decision, like if the ministry wanted to sell a huge asset or make a huge financial uh, vote, or if you wanted to kick me out as the minister, <laughs> all of those things, anything that's um, that's called by the bylaws for this, this voting process by the membership, you have a voice that is very important. And you, uh, it also allows you to um, open up uh, our financials or attend a board meeting. We'll talk about that a little bit uh, later. But the deadline is February 11th. We invite you to consider. And let me know if you have any questions. So let's say our closing affirmations together. The light of God surrounds us. I am that light. The love of God enfolds us. I am that love. The power of God moves through us. I am that power. The grace of God expresses as us. I am that grace. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. And Margo's going to sing this Ricky Byers uh, song that I love so much, so appropriate for the day. And I'm going to spotlight you, Margo. Wash over us. We let, we let it be. All right. Mm -hmm. 
Many pray along the way They don't stop to wonder what the world is coming to Love will take them higher Reveal the way to a greater love Oh, so the truth is telling me Sing our liberation for the ones who are not free. Love will take us higher, reveal the way to a greater love. Oh, we let it wash over us, we let it make us kinder, we let it make us better, we let it be, we let it early in the morning. Together we let it now and forever we let it be we let the love wash over us we let we let it be So just taking this moment to be in gratitude to say thank you for the words that are spoken were spoken today by Reverend David and the music that was sung by Margot, always in synchronicity. We say a blessing for all of us on this call and those out there today while we experience this, this weather that is huh, just keeping us inside, but we are staying safe and we pray that everyone else is as well. I just say a blessing for this week as we go about our way and say thank you, God, for this and everything that we have at our disposal for life and for living and for love and being in oneness with one another and with others. And with these words, I say thank you, God. I release them. I let them be. And so it is. Amen. And so it is. Thank you for doing that, Marty. Namaste. Good to see everyone.